behalf of the Center for Strategic Philanthropy at, at the University of Cambridge, thank you to Azim Premji for uh, agreeing to chat with me. Uh, it's always great to learn from you uh, and to hear firsthand uh, your insights on the evolving role that philanthropy plays uh, in our social uh, and uh, economic landscapes uh, in India uh, and, and more generally uh, around the world. Uh, as the founder and uh, chairman of Wipro, Azim Premji has uh, for more than half a century been uh, one of the world's most inspiring uh, entrepreneurs uh, and a genuine trailblazer in the creation of the uh, Indian IT industry. Uh, at the turn of the century, uh, he established the Azim Premji Foundation, uh, and within 10 years, the foundation was supporting more than 16,000 schools in more than uh, 40 districts across uh, India. 10 years ago or so, uh, the, the new Azim Premji University was uh, created to provide uh, teaching programs and a wide range of fields related to human development, including health, uh, governance, uh, and sustainability. I've had the honor uh, of speaking with Azim uh, on a few occasions uh, and experiencing his thoughtfulness, generosity, uh, and humility. Uh, Azim G, uh, your foundation has been on the front line of responding to the COVID-19 pandemic in, in India, uh, addressing urgent needs from healthcare and, and humanitarian perspectives. Uh, do you think the COVID pandemic is changing the way that people think about the role of uh, private philanthropic organizations in helping communities respond to this kind of emergency? You know, we have been involved quite actively in helping tackle COVID-19 across the country on many fronts. This includes immediate humanitarian response and also long-term support for revival of livelihoods. It also includes a comprehensive healthcare response. Testing is only one part of it. I don't think the pandem pandemic will have a lasting impact on how people think about private philanthropy. However, it will have significant impact on two crucial fronts. Uh, people appreciate now a lot more the importance of public systems. This includes not just the public healthcare system, but also systems that, are, that emphasize social security, systems for data collection and research. Even if it is not clearly articulated, but even if it is not clearly articulated by many people, there is a greater acceptance now that we have to cooperate. We have to be, have a solid amount of solidarity. We cannot leave everyone to themselves. And it is possible that that may have an effect on philanthropy, which could be lasting. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I'd like to ask you about your uh, personal journey in structuring uh, your, your philanthropy. You know, an increasing number of people in the world's uh, emerging economies are likely to go through uh, something similar uh, in, in the coming decades. How do you go about setting about your own foundation and working out where and how uh, you could have the most impact uh, as a philanthropist? What led you to focus on education specifically? And, and what advice would you give aspiring philanthropists in the emerging markets who are thinking about their own philanthropic journey ahead? You know, when I went about setting up the foundation, there were three things that I was clear about. One, that we must contribute towards developing a just, equitable, and humane society, a society as envisioned in the Constitution of India. That for, and, and that for this, we will discover various paths. There is no one single path. Second, we must approach this whole matter with humility. Mm -hmm. We were business people and I knew social issues were far more complex than business. So we went about knowing what that we went about listening to people and getting guided by the wisdom of many, many people. Also, we must retain the culture of humility. Third, we must set up a very strong organization with people of dedication and competence and build it as an institution. And we must trust those people to do the right thing. I knew that setting up this professional ethic of an institution would be the most crucial thing for long-term contribution of the philanthropy and of the foundation. My advice would be the same. 
set up a professional institution, empower it with people you trust, and have humility to accept that we may have the money, but others know a lot more about social issues and how to tackle them. And, you know, the, the top 30 fastest growing uh, economies in the world are all in emerging markets. Uh, a lot of wealth is being generated within these economies. Uh, and as a result, uh, a new generation uh, of philanthropists and hopefully strategic philanthropists is beginning to emerge in, in parts of Africa, the Middle East and, uh, of course, uh, Asia. What impact do you think that this could have on the global economy and society over the next few decades? I think the philanthropy in this part of the world needs to scale up significantly, much, much more significantly. And I'm referring to the new, newly wealthy people mm -hmm. who seem to be the most generous. Many of these countries have their own old traditions of philanthropy, and I'm not referring to that. You know, uh, of course, as you know, uh, India is obviously a country with very rich cultures and uh, vibrant social structures. Uh, how would you describe the culture of giving uh, and philanthropy in, in, in general uh, in the country? And how are attitudes to institutional philanthropy in India evolving over time? In my view, there are two kinds of long-standing cultures of philanthropy in India. First, the traditional giving of the business people back to their communities. Mm -hmm. This has been a very strong tradition is not talked about adequately because many of these people don't want to talk about their philanthropy. The size of this philanthropy may vary from very small to fairly significant, but it is a very strong culture. One of the issues I think is, in, 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 I think is such people are very self-effacing and don't talk fancy language. They get satisfaction by what they do, not by publicizing it. Second is a large scale philanthropy, deeply committed to nation building. Starting in the early 20th century with the Tatars, the Sarabhais, the Jamanlal Bajaj, there was a significant philanthropy from big business which contributed both to the Indian independence movement and the building of institutions in the country. This was truly remarkable. All of us can see the effects of that even now. In India, given the wealth that has been generated over the past two, three decades, we could be doing a lot more in philanthropy. I'd like to take specific, I would not like to take specific names because the urge to do philanthropy must come from the inside. But I certainly think that we can be doing a lot, lot more. I particularly think that philanthropy should contribute to developing and sustaining institutions at all levels. I'd like to ask you about your views on the evolving role of the private sector. You know, what, what else do business leaders need to be doing, uh, not just in India, but around the world, to help address some of our world's biggest challenges, uh, both now and in the future? I don't think the business and private sector is doing enough, quite truly. First, businesses must become a lot more sustainable. That is to do with their environmental resp responsibility and climate change. They must also contribute by themselves towards social matters because they are also citizens of this world. Second, on individual philanthropy, also a lot more should be done. And uh, finally, and, and importantly, um, I, I'd really like to hear your thoughts on Islamic uh, giving. You know, as you know, sir, uh, anywhere between 400 billion to a trillion dollars a year is donated by Muslims around the world through zakat and sadaqah every single year. Yet one in three Muslims around the world live under the poverty line is staggering. Uh, how can we better harness the power of Islamic giving in a more strategic and coordinated way with a view to maximizing philanthropic impact? I'm not sure there's any simple answer to this question. I would just recommend that this money should go towards the most needy and it should go towards developing high quality institutions which have humility. Also, it would be good the benefits of this giving is non-secretarian. Wisely said. Azim G, thank you once again for your time, your always great insights, uh, and of course, all the inspirational impact you uh, continue to have with everything that you do. 
I very much look forward to taking you up on your long-standing offer to visit your foundation and headquarters in Bangalore. And in the meantime, I wish you and the family the best of health and well-being, uh, always. Thank you, sir. Please do visit us. It would be a pleasure.